Fitna or fitna, place fitn, Arabic, ftient ftn temptation, trial, sedition, civil strife is an Arabic word with extensive connotations of trial, affliction, or distress. A word with important historical implications, it is also widely used in modern Arabic. One might distinguish between the meanings of fitna as used in classical Arabic and the meanings of fitna as used in modern standard Arabic and various colloquial dialects. Due to the conceptual importance of fitna in the Quran, its use in that work may need to be considered separately from, though in addition to, the word's general lexical meaning in classical Arabic. Aside from its use in the Quran, fitna is used as term for the four heavy civil wars within the Islamic Caliphate from the 7th to the 9th century AD. Topic root and forms Arabic, in common with other Semitic languages like Hebrew, employs a system of root letters combined with vowel patterns to constitute its whole range of vocabulary. As such, identification of the root letters of any word might bring a better understanding the word's full semantic range. Fitna has the triliteral root fa ta nun Arabic. Ft and in addition to the feminine noun fitna, fitn, this root forms, in particular, a form I active verb fatana, yaftinu Arabic, ftn yftn a form I passive verb futina, yuftenu Arabic, ftn yftn a form I mazdar futun Arabic, ftown a form I active participle fatan Arabic, fatan a form I passive participle maftan Arabic, mftown and so on. Topic lexical meanings Topic Classical Arabic Lane, in his monumental Arabic-English lexicon compiled from various traditional Arabic lexicographical sources available in Cairo in the mid-19th century, reported that to burn is the primary signification of the verb. The verb then came to be applied to the smelting of gold and silver. It was extended to mean causing one to enter into fire and into a state of punishment or affliction. Thus, one says that something caused one to enter all fitna, i.e. trial, affliction, etc., or more generally, an affliction whereby some good or evil quality is put to the test. Lane glosses the noun fitna as meaning a trial, a probation, affliction, distress or hardship, and says that the sum total of its meaning in the language of the Arabs is an affliction whereby one is tried, proved or tested. The definitions offered by Lane match those suggested by Badawi and Halim in their Dictionary of Quranic Usage. They gloss the triliteral root as having the following meanings, to purify gold and silver by smelting them, to burn, to put to the test, to afflict in particular as a means of testing someone's endurance, to disrupt the peace of a community, to tempt, to seduce, to alert, to infatuate. Topic Modern Standard Arabic The meanings of fitna as found in Classical Arabic largely carry over into Modern Standard Arabic, as evidenced by the recitation of the same set of meanings in Hans Weir's Dictionary of Modern Written Arabic. In addition, Weir glosses the noun fitna as also meaning charm, charmingness, attractiveness, enchantment, captivation, fascination, enticement, temptation, infatuation, intrigue, sedition, riot, discord, dissension, civil strife. Buckwalter and Parkinson, in their Frequency Dictionary of Arabic, list the noun fitna as the 1560th most frequent word in their corpus of over 30 million words from modern Standard Arabic and colloquial Arabic dialects. They gloss fitna as meaning charm, allure, enchantment, unrest, riot, rebellion. Topic Nakla raid. First mention of fitna in Quran. The first Quran verse about fitna was supposedly revealed during the Nakla raid. After his return from the first Badr encounter, Battle of Safwan, Muhammad sent Abdullah ibn Josh in Rajab with twelve men on a fact-finding operation. Abdullah ibn Josh was a maternal cousin of Muhammad. He took along with him Abu Hadaifa, Abdullah ibn Josh, Akash ibn Misan, Utbab. Ghazwan, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Amir ibn Rabia, Waqid ibn Abdullah and Khalid ibn al-Bukhar. Muhammad gave Abdullah ibn Josh a letter, but not to be read until he had travelled for two days and then to do what he was instructed to do in the letter without putting pressure on his companions. Abdullah proceeded for two days, then he opened the letter, it told him to proceed until he reached Nakla, between Mecca and Taif, to lie in wait for the Quraysh, and to observe what they were doing. While the Quraysh were busy preparing food, the Muslims attacked. In the short battle that took place, Waqid ibn Abdullah killed Amr ibn Hadrami, the leader of the Quraysh caravan, with an arrow. The Muslims captured two Quraysh tribe members. Nafel ibn Abdullah managed to escape. The Muslims took Uthman ibn Abdullah and al-Hakam ibn Qaysan as captives. Abdullah ibn Josh returned to Medina with the booty and with the two captured Quraysh tribe members. The followers planned to give one-fifth of the booty to Muhammad. <laughs> Mentioning in Quran 
Muhammad initially disapproved of that act and suspended any action as regards the camels and the two captives on account of the prohibited months. The Arab pagans exploited this opportunity to accuse the Muslims of violating what is divinely inviolable fighting in the months considered sacred to the Arab pagans. This idle talk brought about a painful headache for Muhammad's companions, until at last they were relieved when Muhammad revealed a verse regarding fighting in the sacred months. They ask you concerning fighting in the sacred months i.e. 1st, 7th, 11th and 12th months of the Islamic calendar. Say, fighting therein is a great transgression but a greater transgression with Allah is to prevent mankind from following the way of Allah, to disbelieve in Him, to prevent access to al-Masjid al-Haram at Makkah, and to drive out its inhabitants, and al-Fitna is worse than killing. Quran 2-217 According to Ibn Qayyim, he said, "...most of the scholars have explained the word fitna here as meaning shirk." The Muslim Mufasir ibn Kathir's commentary on this verse in his book Tafsir ibn Kathir is as follows Means, trying to force the Muslims to revert from their religion and re embrace Kufr after they had believed, is worse with Allah than killing. Allah said, They ask you concerning fighting in the sacred months. Say, fighting therein is a great transgression but a greater transgression with Allah is to prevent mankind from following the way of Allah, to disbelieve in Him, to prevent access to al-Masjid al-Haram at Makkah, and to drive out its inhabitants, and al-Fitna is worse than killing. This ayah means, backquote if you had killed during the sacred month, they disbelievers of Quraysh have hindered you from the path of Allah and disbelieved in it. They also prevented you from entering the sacred mosque, and expelled you from it, while you are its people a greater transgression with Allah than killing whom you killed among them. Also, and al-fitna is worse than killing, this means that trying to force Muslims to revert from their religion and re-embrace Kufr after they had believed is worse than killing, says Allah, Allah said, and they will never cease fighting you until they turn you back from your religion Islamic monotheism if they can, so, they will go on fighting you with unrelenting viciousness. Ibn Ishaq went on, when the Quran touched this subject and Allah brought relief to the Muslims instead of the sadness that had befallen them, Allah's messenger took possession of the caravan and the two prisoners. The Quraysh offered to ransom the two prisoners, Uthman bin Abdullah and Hakam bin Qaysan. Allah's messenger said, we will not accept your ransom until our two companions return safely. Meaning Sa'd bin Abu Waqqas and Utbah bin Ghazwan, for we fear for their safety with you. If you kill them, we will kill your people. Topic in Quran. Topic statistics. Badawi and Halim note that the triliteral root fa ta nun Arabic ftn occurs in six different forms, a total of 60 times in the Quran. In particular, it appears 34 times as a noun and 26 times in various verbal forms. Bakhtiar's concordance of the Quran confirms Badawi and Halim's numbers, although Bakhtiar further breaks down the appearance of each verbal form by distinguishing active and passive verbs by tense as well. The following table sets out the details. Note that since the root only appears as a verb in form I forms, that is assumed. Topic semantics The triliteral root fa ta nun Arabic, ftn as noted above, bears a range of significations, even in the Quran itself. The Quranic appearances of the root are explored below in no particular order. Topic persecution Fitna as persecution appears in several of the verses commanding Muslims to fight the unbelievers specifically referring to the Meccan polytheists who had persecuted Muhammad and his early followers, thus leading to the Hijra. For example, in Quran 2-191, the command to fight is justified on the grounds that persecution al is worse than slaying. Similarly, in Quran 2-193, Muslims are forbidden from fighting unbelievers around the Holy Mosque in Mecca unless the unbelievers attack first, in which case Muslims are to fight until there is no persecution and the religion is God's. The Hijra is mentioned in Quran 16-110 as having occurred because of the persecution believers had suffered in Mecca. Other examples are Quran 85-10, which promises the chastisement of hell for those who have persecuted Muslims, and Quran 4-101, which provides that one's daily required prayer may be shortened if, when on a journey, one fears that the unbelievers may attack if one remains in a place long enough to complete the full prayer. <laughs> Dissension, sedition in Quran 3-7, the Quran itself is described as having clear revelations, they are the substance of the book, and others which are allegorical. 
And then the Quran characterizes those who are unsteady and who do not have firm faith as desiring dissension in the community through their pursuit of interpretations of the allegorical verses of the Quran. A set of occurrences of the root related to dissension or sedition occurs in Quran 947-49, where those who say they are believers, but show themselves reluctant to follow certain of God's commands, are described as seeking sedition among the community. Topic. Trial Many instances of the root as «trial» appear throughout the Quran. This sense of the root bears the further sense of a «tribulation» or «difficulty» in such verses as, for example, Quran 2040, where Moses, after killing a man in Egypt, was «tried with a heavy trial» by being forced to flee and to live among the Midians for many years, and Quran 22.11, where some believers are characterized as worshipping God, "...upon a narrow marge," since they are happy so long as their life is relatively secure and easy, but as soon as they experience a trial, they turn away from God. However, the root in other verses carries a sense of "...trial." as simply a kind of test of a person's commitment to their faith without necessarily implying that the testing results from something bad happening, as the sense of trial as tribulation might bear. For example, Quran 6.53 says, in part, "...and even so do we try some of them by others." Things widely recognized as good things in life may serve as trials, as Quran 8.28 and 64-15 make clear by describing one's own wealth and children as trials. Quran 39-49 also carries this sense of trial by something good, their, God's own, boon, or blessing, is described as a trial for certain people. Again, in Quran 72-14-15, God will give those idolaters who decide to tread the right path an abundance of good, that we may test them thereby, to see whether they will turn away from God once they have obtained his favor or whether they will be steadfast in faith. Trials may also result from things revealed by God that some may find difficult to accept. For example, Quran 17-60 describes the revelation of the "'cursed tree' as "'an ordeal for mankind' Another example of this sense is Quran 74 to 31, where the number of the angels who guard the fire has been made a stumbling block for those who disbelieve. And that those in whose hearts there is disease, and disbelievers, may say, What meaneth Allah by this similitude? Topic temptation The root also bears the sense of temptation, as in Quran 57 14, where those who were hypocritical in their faith will be turned away and told by the steadfast believers, from whom they are separated, ye tempted one another, and hesitated, and doubted, and vain desires beguiled you till the ordinance of Allah came to pass, and the deceiver deceived you concerning Allah. In Quran 20 90, Aaron is said to have warned the Israelites, when Moses had left them to meet with God for forty days, that the golden calf was only something they were being tempted by or, in Pichthal's translation, seduced with. Harut and Marut warn the people of Babylon, in Quran 2–102, we are only a temptation, therefore disbelieve not, although the warning proved to be ineffective for some. Topic historical usage Aside from its use in the Quran, fitna came to have a primary sense of revolt, disturbances, civil war, but a civil war that breeds schism and in which the believer's purity of faith is in grave danger. This was especially so as it came, in the term first fitna, to refer to the first major civil war of the Islamic Caliphate, which lasted from 656 to 661. On account of the struggles that marked Muawiyah's advent, the term fitna was later applied to any period of disturbances inspired by schools or sects that broke away from the majority of believers. The term thus appears the descriptions of other major conflicts such as the second fitna (680-92), the third fitna (744-47), the fourth fitna (809-827), and the fitna of Al-Andalus (1009-1031). Topic see also Temptation topic Notes topic References Badawi, Elsid M. and Halim, Muhammad Abdul 2008. Arabic English Dictionary of Quranic Usage. Brill. Bakhtiar, Layla Concordance of the Sublime Quran. Library of Islam. Buckwalter, Tim and Parkinson, Dilworth 2011. A Frequency Dictionary of Arabic, Core Vocabulary for Learners. Routledge. ISBN 9780415444962. Topic Gardette, L. 1991. Fitna. In Lewis, B. et al. The Encyclopedia of Islam. 2. CG. New ed. Brill. 
pp. 930–931. Lane, William Edward A Ridge. Pub. 1877. An Arabic-English Lexicon. Volume 6, Gay and Fa. Library du Liban. Soravia, Bruna, Fitna, in Muhammad in History, Thought, and Culture, an Encyclopedia of the Prophet of God two vols, edited by C. Fitzpatrick and A. Walker, Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2014, Volume 1, pp. 209–211. Weir, Hans Cowan, J. Milton, ed. A Dictionary of Modern Written Arabic 3rd ed. Spoken Language Services. 